Lauren with Bargain Beadbox. Today we're going to be making an Amazonite pendant necklace that has a beaded portion with the pendant and then in the back it's got a beaded chain made out of eye pins. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're using the Bargain Beadbox from March 2024 Seafoam Sunrise. Let's get started. Hey guys, this video requires a lot of simple loops. So we're gonna do it really quick before we get started, just because during the tutorial with everything going on the bead mat, it can be a little hard to see what's going on. So hopefully this will be easier to follow. Um, and if you already know how to do this, then feel free to skip forward. But we're just gonna take our eye pin. We're going to put a bead on it. And um, when I'm making the loops, I like to make the one um, to make sure that they are facing the same direction so that it, everything hangs evenly. So I'm going to hold it like this with the loop facing towards me um, just so that I can make sure that I'm looping in the same direction. You don't want it going off at a crazy angle that makes it hang unevenly. So first thing I'm gonna do is trim it. And I like to leave, I don't know, I guess it's about half an inch. Um, And so I sn you snip it down and then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and the first thing I'm going to do is grab the top of it and curl it away from me. We're going to just start making top curl of that, uh, of that loop there. So now it looks like this as I very helpfully drop it like a little shepherd's crook at the top. So I'm going to grab that at the base and I'm going to lean it back towards me and kind of just try to form the base of that loop. So now it looks like this. We got a little more of a structure going on. And now I'm gonna grab, here, I'll try to hold it sideways so you can see, grab the tip of it, and I'm just gonna roll it back towards me with a twisting motion to try to make the tip here meet the bottom of the loop at the base. We're just gonna roll it until it gets to the base. All right, now you've made a loop and you can, if you want, and that looks like this. You can play with it. You can kind of get it to sit up a little bit more to match the back a little more nicely. You can like grab the base, pull it back some more, but that's it. That's the, that's the gist of it. All right, so from the box, we are using the Amazonite teardrop pendant, the three millimeter faceted Amazonite rounds, the eight millimeter Amazonite, the eight millimeter flower Amazonite, the crystal rondelle strand, the little bonus bale, the crystal teardrop beads, bead caps, metal spacers, and eye pins. So the only items that I'm going to be using that aren't in your box today um, is our wire. I'm using a seven strand 0.45 millimeter tiger tail. I wanted a nice thick one because we're gonna be doing some heavier beads. Um, I'm gonna use some crimp beads these are find 2128 in the bead box bargain store and i'm going to be using some clamshell bead tips we just sold out of these the find 1095 but we do have more coming in soon and i'm also because i like magnetic clasps i'm going to use talk 700 from the bead box bargain store it's a magnetic round clasp in anti-copper you can absolutely use the toggles that come with the box if you want i just i like magnets so i'm going to use a magnet all right Let's do this. Okay, so I'm also gonna show you the tools here. I'm using wire cutters. I'm using round nose pliers. And I've got my crimping pliers also. I'm gonna go ahead and get started by cutting a piece of tiger tail. And I'm probably gonna cut about 12 inches. That's more than I need, but I always like to have a little extra to work with, especially because I'm gonna be working out both sides of this design. So I'm just gonna take my wire cutters and give that a snip. And I am going to start at the very center. To get started, I'm probably gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put a three millimeter bead in the very middle. This is just because it will kind of go under the pendant bale and help it stay in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put my bale on my pendant. And to do that, I'm just gonna open it up. You can use pliers, you can just use your hands if you want, it's not that stiff. And then I'm going to stick the pegs in the hole on the teardrop. And I'm just gonna give it a good pinch. I'll kinda 
gently squeeze it with my pliers to make sure we got on there well. All right, that is all there is to that. Now we're gonna just, oh, except I put it on backwards apparently, look. Didn't realize it had a front and a back, but a little pinchy bit on it does. All right, stand by. We're just gonna pretend that this went on this direction to begin with. Hey, look at that. Ta-da. Now we're gonna string it on. And yeah, the three millimeter bead is just gonna kind of sit underneath it. So it's not just bare string there. And I'm going to put one of my metal spacers on either side. And so it will sit like that. That looks nice. Now I'm gonna start. Um, I have kind of picked out the more blue beads off my strand, which is pretty much everything I had left after making the ombre necklace uh, anyway. So that worked out well. I'm gonna do a matte bead and then a shiny bead. I'm gonna pick one that kind of matches my pendant, which is a little more on the teal green side, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then another matte bead. That one's a little paler, but I kind of like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to go matte and then shiny and then matte again. I'm kind of mixing up. I've got the lighter one towards the center on this side. Again, every bead, every gemstone is going to be a little different and that's totally fine. That's part of what makes it so unique and fun. Now I'm going to put um, a metal spacer on each side, followed by one of my green teardrops. And then I'm going to do a bead cap. And then I'm going to do another Amazonite round. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. And I'm gonna have the teardrop face towards the pendant. And yeah, we'll see how this looks. I think it's gonna be pretty. So here we go, we'll start on this side. Metal bead, teardrop facing the pendant, bead cap, and round. And we'll do the same thing over here. And um, one note with the green teardrop beads, a few members have reported issues with um, sometimes because they are dip dyed to get that gorgeous marble finish extra dye can accumulate on the surface. I would just give them mine a quick rinse with some soap and water and dry them with a paper towel. And I wasn't really having problems with them beforehand, but I did that just to be absolutely sure that it won't, I won't have dye transfer issues here. All right. So next I'm going to use these crystals. I have sorted out the shimmer white beads from my crystal strand. Um, I'm going to be using about eight of them. If you don't have eight white beads on your strand, you can use some of the crystal ones too, or even the white that have a little bit of peach on them. So it's totally, totally fine any way you want to do it. I'm going to do a white bead on each side. And then I think I'm going to do another matte Amazonite followed by a bead cap. So we'll do that and that. Yeah, and then we'll put a bead cap facing towards the pendant again. All right, yeah, I think that looks nice. And after that, let's see, let's do another shiny bead on each side. And maybe I'll go with the greener shiny bead this time. Yeah, I like that. So shiny bead on each side then we'll do the white uh, crystal and then I'm going to do one more crystal teardrop. Then I think we'll do a bead cap again. All right, so we're just going to string those real quick on both sides. And put this bead cap on. And I do try when I make multiple tutorials to make sure that you're gonna have enough beads to make all of them. So I'm being a little bit light with the spacer beads in this design because I also use them in my ombre design. 
um, if you're only making this piece. You could add more spacers in here if you wanted to. It's certainly not a necessity. It'll look great either way. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in, I think, as we're getting close to the transition to the beaded chain part, I think I'm just going to do a, an Amazonite round and then a spacer and an Amazonite round on each side here. The little three millimeter faceted rounds. So here we go. Got the faceted round, the spacer, and then another faceted round. And we'll just repeat that on this side and then we'll be ready to add the clamshell and the crimp bead. So, okay. And when I am working with heavy beads especially, sometimes I like to loop it around and through the crimp bead again, just to give it a little more to hold on to since we're not going back through the crimp bead like you normally would um, to add a clasp. We're not trying to make a loop at the end. We're going to let the clamshell do that. So I'm just going to come over here and go loop it around and back through the bottom of my crimp bead. And kind of pull that tight to make a little loop. This is all going to be covered by the clamshell. I'm just doing this to give the crimp bead more to grip. All right. with my crimping pliers. I'm going to use the side that shapes it into sort of a C. And then I'm going to use the side that kind of closes it up a little bit. And I may repeat that and or give it a good squish with my chain nose because this one doesn't have to be pretty. It's going to be covered up. I'm just trying to make it really, really secure. Since these are heavier beads. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to trim the excess being careful not to cut my loop there. And now I'm going to pull up the clamshell tip and close it over the crimp bead. I'm going to use my chain. Actually, I'm going to use the center of my round nose for this, I think, because the serration is a little harder on the bead tip than the flat. All right. Okay. So I didn't get that quite exactly straight. That's better. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we just have to repeat that process on this side. And then we'll have a piece with two loops ready to add our eye pins. And when I am doing um, this, the second side, I like to open my clamshell all the way just so I can get really flush with it to do my crimp bead. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take the crimp bead. I'm going to go around and back through it. But first I'm going to try to maneuver it down pretty close to the bead tip. I don't want to pull it so, so tight that it can't move at all. So I'm going to curl my beads up to make sure they have enough give to have some motion. If you pull them completely straight, then if there's any curl to it later, sometimes they don't sit right. Okay. And now we have our beaded portion of the necklace and it's ready to go. So for the second half of this, we're going to be using eye pins to make simple loops and create a beaded chain. To start off with, I am just gonna do a simple loop with an eight millimeter round. So if you've never done this before, it's really not difficult. The trickiest part for me and the part I always forget is to watch which direction the bottom loop is facing. I like to do mine with the top and bottom loops facing the same direction. I think it makes them a little, they makes them hang a little better when you're looping it. So I'm going to make sure that it's pointed towards me and not sideways. And as the loop is pointed straight at me, I'm going to go ahead back here 
I'm going to bend this back just a little bit. I'm going to grip it at the top and roll it down with my roll it down towards me with around the round nose pliers so that it forms a loop. And if you need to, you can play with it and you can pull it back and make it prettier than that if you want to also. But that's just a really, really super basic, simple loop. I cut my eye pin off a little tiny bit short to make it match the other side perfectly, but it'll still function. <laughs> it'll be fine. I am going to make my fingers a mess with cutting these anti-copper eye pins, but oh well. Um, now, when you're attaching it, you want to pull towards you. You are not uncurling it, you are pulling it up. And then we're going to put the loop in here and we're going to pull it back down. There we go. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. So I'm going to cut it with my wire cutters. I'm going to leave a about what's that like a half an inch let's see here and I'm going to again roll the pliers away from me I'm going to come down to the base I'm going to roll it back we're making a bigger loop this time that's okay and then I'm going to complete that rolling process and roll it down and you can pull it back and make it stand up a little more if you want to so that it matches the other side. And again, that is all there is to it. I tend to make my loops small, so doing them large is a little bit harder for me, but it just, it's against my instinct because usually I am connecting them uh, to an earring or something. I don't make beta chains nearly as often, but they're really pretty. All right, and again, we're just gonna fold that back down and there we go. Okay, so now we're ready. I didn't make those loops quite as flat as I did the first time either. I didn't have it pointing perfectly towards me. It's okay, it would be all right. Now um, we're gonna make the next loop. For this next one, I'm gonna do, I think, um, an Amazonite. And these Amazonite rounds, the drill holes are very close to this eye pin size. If you have any trouble, sometimes the tip of the eye pins get a little blunted during shipping. So I'll just cut, snip a little bit off with my wire cutter. And then it's sometimes easier, there we go, to get it to slip on. Just gotta cut a fresh end at times. All right, um, I think I'm gonna do a crystal next and then another, another little tiny Amazonite. There we are barely fits, but it does fit. Okay. And again, I'm going to snip, grab the end, make sure, make sure that it's pointing towards you, Lauren. There we go. And now I'm going to grab the end and pull it towards me. I'm going to grab the base and pull it back. Close that loop. Try not to explode my Amazonite. We go. <laughs> For something I've done a zillion times, you'd think I'd be able to do it perfectly even every single time, but alas, that is not the way that my brain and hands communicate. So here we are. And if you want, when you're forming your loop, you can try to just pick up the next one with it. I find it much easier just to open and close them afterwards because it having the other loop on while I'm trying to make my own loop, it just it interferes for me and I tend to have trouble with it. So you may not, but. Let's go ahead and after for this next one, I think I'm going to do a spacer bead and then these, they look like little gumdrops to me, little teardrop things. I think they're fun. We'll do a spacer bead and a drop. Maybe. Do I want to put a 
No, I think I like it without the big cap. I think we're just gonna do that. So I'll make two of these. So at this point, I think I'm going to do just another Amazonite round. I'll just do two more. Yeah, I think that looked nice. Two more of the round Amazonite. So next I'm probably going to do, let's see, how about a little spacer or a th I mean a three millimeter Amazonite as a spacer and then a bead cap, then a matte bead, another bead cap, and then another three millimeter Amazonite. We'll get a little fancy. We'll do two with this pattern. All right, so I'm just gonna do a few more on each side and then we're getting close to the length I want it. You can keep going as long as you want to and you can add as much length as you want to. But I'm gonna do on each side, I'm gonna do one white crystal followed by one more plain eight millimeter round. I say plain, these beads are gorgeous. All right but non-matte polished eight millimeter round. There we go. And then at the end, next to my clasp, because I like a small bead next to my clasp, I think I'm just gonna do a little three millimeter bead all by itself. And remember, you can trim those eye pin ends off if your bead doesn't wanna fit on it, as is. And I'm just gonna do, um, just gonna do all of these real quick here, and then we'll add the clasp and we'll be done. You could also, if you want, add more chain. Look at that, that eye pin is just a little too thick. I'll try a different one. Add a little chain at the end to add more length too. I mean, you can um, make this your own and make it however you want it to be. But I am probably just gonna string these beads, well, string, uh, loop these eye pins and call it a day. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So now all that's left to do is attach our clasp. And um, I've made my necklace probably about an 18 inch length. Again, you can definitely keep going to your heart's content. You could add some chain here if you want it longer, do whatever you wanna do. I'm pretty happy with the length. I'm gonna use a magnetic clasp. I know some people don't love magnets for a heavier design. And I totally understand, but I haven't had any difficulty with these clasps. I just, I really like magnets. They're easy. They feel nice on my skin. I'm kind of a highly sensitive person that way. And you could absolutely use the toggles included in this box and they would work completely fine and be beautiful. I just, I like my magnets. So I'm going to use a magnet clasp. I try not to send magnets every month because I know people like other clasps too, but they just, I don't know, they make me happy. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna use. All right, and that is it for this necklace. All right, and you've added your clasp, so now your necklace is complete. We've got this beautiful beaded portion with the pendant, and then we've got our hand beaded chain with our clasp. So this one is finished. I love the Amazonite teardrop. I like how just that little Amazonite bead in between the spacers holds the teardrop in place. 
but also doesn't show a bare wire. And just the different colors and patterns and textures of this piece make me really happy. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. We're making some matching earrings soon with some wrapped loops. So that'll be fun. Thanks again for being here and happy beating. <laughs>